hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous sunny day. Good Lord. Bright sunny day. But a warm sun. You see I'm in a long sleeve black t-shirt. Unbelievably as this beautiful fall weather descends on paradise in Garfield, Texas. A little dog and I have been out finishing up our weed job from hell, or weeding job from hell, uh, <clears throat> here on this gorgeous Thursday, October 11th, 2018. I keep thinking it's October 12th. Anyway, uh, we will see if I can get a real Columbus Day rant ready for tomorrow, but who needs Columbus when you have got Brett Kavanaugh and Jair Bolsonaro to uh, to be fucking up a planet. We don't even need the, the Christopher Columbus to take uh, those honors. So this is going to be part two of uh, our Doomer headlines. I just finished uh, the climate change meltdown roundup rant for today, and I probably should have included this story in that, but this is a good segue. So I was just talking yesterday about uh, Brett Kavanaugh, that the only, the, the only woman that we need to worry about Brett Kavanaugh raping would be Mother Earth, otherwise known as Gaia. Little dog, if you get too hot, I guess you can run off. So, and then I open up the mainstream media, I guess you can call Daily Beast the mainstream media. This was on Yahoo News today, right here. So, Brett Kavanaugh is at work. And what do you think he did on his first day at work? Kavanaugh and Supreme Court to Planet drop dead within one day of a frightening UN warning about global warming, the Supreme Court let stand an anti-EPA decision written by then Judge Kavanaugh. Wow. So this is Brett Kavanaugh uh, weighing in on one of his own decisions. Uh, guys, we are so fucked. In the same week that the world scientists declare global climate disruption has reached a point of no return, the Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh, and the Trump administration all agreed to do nothing about it. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, on Monday, uh... That's it. I'm, I'm sorry, it was Tuesday. When, when did this fucking Kavanaugh start to work? On Monday? On Tuesday, the Supreme Court, at the request of the Trump administration, dismissed an appeal of a D.C. Circuit decision that prevented the EPA from regulating a powerful greenhouse gas. Take a wild guess. The author of that decision, Judge... Kavanaugh, for anyone waiting for the impact, now Justice Kavanaugh will have on the Supreme Court, you need wait no longer. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So they, they, they kind of bear, this was a little shitty of them. Uh, while Kavanaugh was not involved in Tuesday's decision to dismiss the case, it is still his opinion that is now the law of the land, and it is a disaster for the environment. So I guess he's not quite ready. I didn't think he was quite ready to start raping the planet, but uh, you know, this is our, he's been raping the planet ever since he's been a judge. So this is talking about uh, this greenhouse gas 
hydrofluorocarbons. Uh, they are nasty greenhouse gases nicknamed super pollutants because each molecule causes around 14,000 times as much warming as a CO2 molecule and they are ubiquitous found in millions of household products from air conditioners to hairspray but thank you Judge Kavanaugh for uh, deciding that we didn't that the EPA did not need to regulate them and thank you to the Supreme Court minus Judge Kavanaugh to let Judge Kavanaugh's opinion stand. Okay, but from our shithole country, let's go down to the shithole country of Brazil, where this will probably be become a daily, a, a, a daily update. Bra Brazil's Bolsonaro plans more power plants in the Amazon rainforest. No shit, Sherlock. Oh God, here it comes, guys. Uh, Brazil's presidential frontrunner, Jair Bolsonaro, would tackle chronic energy shortages in Brazil by expanding both nuclear and hydroelectric power in the Amazon despite environmental concerns. No shit, Sherlock. Yeah. There you go. So first on his list of things to do is to complete Brazil's corruption-plagued Angra 3 nuclear power station on the coast between Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro and but it, 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 beyond that uh, Bolsonaro administration would complete the massive Belo Monte hydroelectric dam on the Zingu River, on the Zingu River uh, a tributary of the Amazon which has been criticized for displacing indigenous communities and causing damage to the Amazon and shelved plans for other dams in the Amazon basin could also be revived. Shelved plans? What the fuck shelved plans are they talking about? I think right now I think I'm remembering this. Uh, is it Manga Bay been saying? I think there's 43 of these giant uh, hydroelectric dams, these planet killing uh, hydroelectric dams already either planned or under construction in the Amazon. And you better believe that these uh, giant energy companies are. Uh, celebrating today, cranking up the bulldozers. It is a good day to be an investor in Caterpillar Incorporated. Okay. Let's see. We're going to switch gears. We're going to go to the shithole state of New Jersey where you will not believe this. In the shithole state of New Jersey, plastic bags are piling up no shit, Sherlock. But this plan will force us to change our behavior. Okay, is New Jersey uh, considering a plastic bag ban? Uh, New Jersey residents alone use 4.4 billion plastic bags annually. New Jersey, 4.4 billion. Uh, okay, 
Now the State Senate Environment and Energy Committee recently voted on what would be the most comprehensive plan to combat plastic pollution in the country. The bill bans single-use carryout bags and includes bans on polystyrene, otherwise known as styrofoam, from food service products. All right. Uh, we shall see. Uh, all right. We shall see if New Jersey is going to have any better success than the state of California. 4.4 billion of these things in New Jersey. Uh, you better believe that the, the grocers associations will be uh, getting their panties in a major wide. There's going to be all sorts of attacks from uh, the grocery lobby. And my guess, as happened in California, the bag ban will never happen. Although it does get through in, in individual cities, you know, like Austin does have a bag ban. Good for them. Anyway, what's going on over there in the shithole country of Gabon? Gabon president says the West must deploy intelligent agencies to defeat poachers. And I honestly don't know which uh, button to pick up on this. Elephants and other endangered species could be driven to extinction unless Western governments begin to take the illegal wildlife trade as seriously as terrorism or drug running, the president of Gabon has warned. Uh, Ali Bongo on Dimba. This guy's name is Bongo, Ali Bongo, whose country is home to the world's largest surviving population of forest elephants, called for an international intelligence and law enforcement effort to break up the transnational criminal groups who now dominate the trade in ivory. Uh, there you go. Quote, we cannot win this battle alone. We are being confronted now by a real network of illicit traffickers. It is an organized one and it does not just end with wildlife. They are moving into gold and they are now moving into human trafficking, said Mr. Bongo. No shit, Sherlock. Mr. Bongo. All right. I can finally agree with Mr. Bongo. I wonder if Mr. Bongo realizes that if uh, there was no such thing as a wildlife trafficking uh, organized crime, uh, would the future residents of Mr. Bongo's country eat? every single forest elephant as the population of sub-Saharan Africa continues to quadruple. But Mr. Bongo, Mr. Bongo is joining forces with UK's Prince William. All right, we got Mr. Bongo and Prince Willie warning of criminal threat to wildlife. Britain's Prince William has told a two-day International Wildlife Protection Conference that he could not face his children if his generation allows elephants, tigers, and other species to become extinct. It's heartbreaking to think that by the time my children, who never should have been born, I admit, George, Charlotte, and Lewis are in their 20s. Elephants, rhinos, and tigers might well be extinct in the wild. 
No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Oh, God. And the layers, the layers of irony. Wow. This was a real tough one for your old Doomsday Prophet to predict a few weeks ago. Hmm. Imagine this one. California judge molds, molds new trial and $289 million roundup award. A San Francisco judge said Wednesday she is considering tossing out the lion's share of the $289 million judgment against agribusiness giant Monsanto and ordering a new trial over whether the company's weed killer caused a groundskeeper's cancer. No shit, Sherlock. Hmm. We shall see. I don't know when she's going to make up her mind. Uh, there you go. Imagine that. Moving on. Oops, my file was not found. What file was not found? Which, oh, this is all about... Uh, this debate in organic farming about whether gene editing, gene editing, I guess they're trying to decide whether edited, not modified, edited, gene edited crops can still get the USDA organic label. I, I guess it's uh, so they're asking the question, are gene edited crops organic? The answer is there is nothing organic about a fucking gene edited crop. But my guess is that whoever needs to make this decision will decide that there is, you know, gene editing is just completely part of nature. And uh, you will see gene edited Franken foods coming to your organic farmer's market soon. We will see. Okay, you will never believe this for the clueless morons still painting their fingernails. Hmm, according to Let Time Magazine explain it to you, even non-toxic nail polish may contain harmful chemical, study says. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, I mean, just walking in the room with nail polish. Uh, cosmetics are subject to very few regulations in the U.S. While they fall under FDA's purview, current laws do not require beauty products and their ingredients to be FDA approved before hitting shelves. Uh, wow, even laws that pertain to cosmetic labeling are somewhat loose. Many buzzwords that show up on product packaging mean, effectively, nothing. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. You'll never believe that. For many nail polishes, brands that tout safe formulations may be substituting some toxic chemicals for equally dangerous alternatives, suggests this new study in environmental science and technology. I like this quote uh, from co-author Anna Young. Quote, it's sort of like playing a game of chemical whack-a-mole where one toxic chemical is removed and you end up chasing down the next potentially harmful chemical substituted in. And what's good or bad for nail polish, you, you can say this about any product 
on the planet, guys. Uh, anyway, wow. Imagine this headline. It was last week, I think, I was reporting about that $100 million uh, fighter jet, F-35 fighter jet, crashing and burning in South Carolina. And now, this week, U.S. military grounds entire fleet of its F-35 fighter jets in wake of South Carolina crash. No shit, Sherlock. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we will see how long this temporary suspension lasts. Oh God, I can't remember the Alert Tribes member sending me in this absolutely terrifying headline of, for the end times from Bloomberg. Jesus, this, this, this is uh, worse than everything in the fucking IPCC report, the election of Brett Kavanaugh and uh, Bolsonaro combined. Thank you, Bloomberg, for ruining my day. How the tequila boom could go bust. Volatile prices, high expenses, and the agave plant's seven-year growth cycle are driving tequila farmers out of business. Oh my god, anything. The world just can't seem to get enough tequila. Yes. But over the last two years, volatile agave prices have soared. Anyway, they're breaking all of this down. Uh, you know, I've been hearing this, and, and, I've, and I've even uh, reported on it a couple of times, that the liquor store owners, who obviously know me by now, uh, in, in Austin, uh, they know Hambone, uh, and, and they've been warning me for quite a while that the price of tequila is getting ready to skyrocket. And in fact, uh, the price of tequila, at least here in Austin, Texas, is, is lower than it's ever been. And I'm going to put in one more plug for Exotico Tequila, E-X-O-T-I-C-O. -O. It's got that multicolored skull on the front of it. There's two tequila labels with this multicolored skull. Make sure you're getting the one called Exotico. Uh, it, it is 100% agave. It, it's not that, that sugar cane shit like that Cuervo gold and that sal's a gold shit that most people think they're the drinking tequila when they're drinking that sugar cane. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. But uh, the, the regular price now in, in Austin, because I just bought a bottle for the double bottle, uh, you know, the, the big ass bottle is $27 uh, for this Exotico. Uh, my friend got it for $23 for the double bottle. But anyway, enough talking. I'm getting thirsty. But we're going to wind up, and I wish uh, I could remember the Alert Tribes member sending me this hilarious story. story. Greece bans overweight tourists from riding Santorini's donkeys. The new rules have been handed down to ensure the safety and well-being of the island's iconic animals. The load carried by Santorini's famed donkeys is set to get a whole lot lighter after the Greek government banned clueless fucking moron overweight tourists from riding the animals. Yes. The country's Minister of Rural Development and Food has published a new set of regulations to protect the animals after a series of complaints were made earlier this year about their well-being. Under the new rules, clueless fucking morons hoping to ride the donkeys 
will have to weigh no more than 220 pounds or one-fifth of the animal's body weight. All right. So, uh, I can, uh, even with Sancho Panza in tow, we can ride a donkey in Santorini, little dog. But, uh, all that stuff about tequila made me thirsty. Uh, but before I go in and make my first margarita for the end times for tonight, I want to uh, hand the reins over to my little milk toast twin over at Collapse Chronicles, and we're going to read the newest article from, uh, I think his name is David Wells Wallace from New York Magazine. He wrote that article last year, that great article for New York Magazine, talking about how we're so fucked. And so I want to read David Wells Wallace's uh, interpretation of the new IPCC climate report. I've drilled it into the ground on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So we're going to go over to Collapse Chronicles if you want to follow me over there where I will read that story and let David and the New York Magazine explain to you a second time why we are so fucked. Drink your margarita for the end times while you still can. My gosh. <laughs>